Could Zika be a brain cancer cure? The Zika virus caused an epidemic of microcephaly in South America, but now scientists say it may be the key to defeating a deadly and hard-to-treat form of brain cancer. Glioblastoma is typically treated using surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. But cancer stem cells often survive the treatment and go on to produce new tumors. The ability to create new cells is also seen in neuroprogenitor cells, which Zika targets and destroys. This prompted scientists to hypothesize that it may also be able to target glioblastoma stem cells. Scientists infected tumors with one of two Zika virus strains and found that both destroyed stem cells while bypassing other tumor cells. Mice were then injected with either a saltwater placebo or Zika virus cells. Researchers found that those infected with Zika had smaller tumors two weeks later. Mutations were also introduced into the Zika cells as an additional safety feature, rendering them still able to destroy cancer stem cells, but also easier to eliminate from the host body. The findings indicate that Zika infection can be used to complement conventional treatment to eradicate the cancer. But though promising, the research still has a long way to go before it can be safely given the green light for human trials. Scientists are coming up with more and more ways to defeat the big C. Malaria vaccine could lead to general cure for cancer. Scientists researching a vaccine against malaria in pregnant women may have accidentally discovered an effective weapon against cancer. Scientists from the University of Copenhagen and the University of British Columbia have identified that the carbohydrate the malaria parasite attaches itself to in the placenta of a pregnant woman is identical to a carbohydrate present in cancer cells. Scientists have created the protein that the malaria parasite uses to attach to the placenta in a laboratory and have added a toxin. The combination of the malaria protein and toxin finds cancer cells, is absorbed, then the toxin is released inside, causing the cancer cells to die. Research groups from the two universities have tested thousands of samples from brain tumors to leukemias and have found that the malaria protein is able to attack more than 90% of all types of tumors. The drug was tested on mice implanted with three types of human tumors, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, and metastatic bone cancer. The mice that were given doses of protein and toxin showed far higher survival rates than the untreated mice. Researchers are now working towards being able to conduct human trials. They say the earliest possible time frame would be in four years. Metastatic cancer could be stopped. A research team led by the Georgia Institute of Technology has developed a new treatment that can potentially stop cancer cells from migrating inside the human body. Cells contain cytoskeletons to give them their shape and to carry out functions such as division and movement. In order to move, the cytoskeletons produce protrusions called phyllopodia, which extends from fibers inside the cell known as lamellopodia. The protrusions help cells to shift locations. Lamellopodia and phyllopodia are overproduced in malignant cancer cells, enabling them to spread around the body at faster speeds. Cancer kills patients often through the spread of malignant cells, which is known as the metastasis process. By attaching nanorods comprised of a small collection of gold atoms to the integrin of the cells, the cytoskeleton can be stopped from overproducing lamellopodia and phyllopodia, which slows down the migration of malignant cells. A low-energy laser of near-infrared light is then used on the cells. The light is absorbed by the gold nanorods, which then partially melts cancer cells and damages lamellopodia and phyllopodia. This can bring the migration of the cancer cells to a stop. If desired, the laser light can also be adjusted to kill the cancer cells. The experimental treatment shows no observable damage to healthy cells, which is an advantage over commonly used chemotherapy. In the experiments, scientists also did not see the treated cancer recur. New Hope for Cancer Patients A panel of experts advising the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has unanimously recommended the approval of a new cancer drug from pharmaceutical giant Novartis. The drug would be used to treat people suffering from leukemia. Tisogen like Lusol is a gene therapy drug used to treat a blood cancer known as B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia in patients aged 3 to 25. The drug uses chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, which reprograms immune cells to defeat cancer. 
The treatment first extracts a patient's own T cells, then genetically modifies them using Tisengel like Lucil to grow new receptors. These receptors target CD19, a protein expressed by malignant B cells. Copies of the new cells are grown in the lab by the millions and injected back into the patient where they then attack the cancer cells. In one test, the treatment led to complete remission in 83% of 52 patients. But it has potentially deadly short-term side effects, such as high fevers, low blood pressure, and lung problems. It's unclear what the long-term side effects are, if any. Therefore, patients who receive treatment are recommended to be monitored for 15 years. The FDA will likely decide whether or not to approve the Novartis drug in the next few months. If they do, it will be the first gene therapy drug of its kind to hit the U.S. market. T-cell therapy could teach the body how to kill cancer. Scientists in the U.S. and Italy are developing a revolutionary cancer therapy that would teach the body to destroy cancer cells on its own, reducing the need for debilitating chemotherapy treatments. T-cell immunotherapy trials have shown great results in the U.S. study so far, with 94% of terminal leukemia patients going into remission. More than 40 patients with other blood cancers were also treated, and more than half of them were left cancer-free. The therapy is similar to a treatment given to British baby Layla Richards last year. Layla Richards was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, a disease in which the bone marrow makes too many immature lymphocytes. In a healthy child, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that become myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells, which then develop into mature red blood cells, platelets, or white blood cells. However, in a child with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, too many stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, B lymphocytes, or T lymphocytes, which are in fact leukemia cells. The leukemia cells are not able to fight infection, and they take up space for healthy blood cells in the blood and bone marrow. This may lead to infection, anemia, and easy bleeding. Last year, doctors in London used a new gene editing technology known as Talon on Layla. The technology uses molecular tools that act like scissors to cut specific genes in order to make the T-cells from healthy donors behave in two specific ways. First, the cells are able to become invisible to a powerful leukemia drug that would normally kill them. Second, they are reprogrammed to target and fight against leukemia cells only. A similar treatment is being tested in Seattle. The new technique involves removing T-cells from patients and genetically modifying them by adding chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, from genetically engineered mice, which are able to target cancer. The modified T-cells are then injected back into the patient's body. In a second major breakthrough in Italy, researchers have discovered that memory T-cells can stay in the body for at least 14 years. This means they could be trained to fight cancer, as well as to remember the disease in case it comes back, allowing them to defeat it again. The latest discovery gives hope for the development of a vaccine-style drug that could stop cancer from coming back once it has been defeated. Fighting cancer with light? Mobilizing a patient's immune system to eradicate cancer is often hit or miss, but a group of researchers have discovered that light and optics might help. Killer T cells act as the body's defense mechanism, but they're often evaded by cancer cells and kept out of areas surrounding aggressive tumors. To help them track down their target, scientists combine the T cells with a light-sensitive algae molecule. When injected into mice and activated with light, the T cells were better able to kill the cancer cells. In a separate project, mice with melanoma on their ears were implanted with LED chips and made to wear a small battery pack. The battery signaled the LED to shine light on the tumor, calling killer T cells to the area and boosting their cancer-killing function. The non-toxic treatment is promising, but researchers are still determining how effective it is on tumors deep in the body.